absence. Um, she did send around an agenda. The uh, first item would be to approve the minutes. So I'd ask for a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, motion to approve. It's Second. three separate. Any corrections uh, or uh, questions about the minutes? Uh, seeing none, and in lieu of doing a roll call vote, I'll uh, just say, are there any objections or abstentions? Oh, Sean is here. Didn't, wasn't expecting you. Uh, any uh, objections or uh, abstentions to the adoption of the minutes? Seeing none, I'll declare them adopted unanimously. Um, excuse me if I make some notes here because I may have to do the minutes. Um, next item would be uh, administrative matters. This uh, board was re-appointed um, uh, by the select board. Um, that entails stopping by the town clerk and getting sworn in at some point. Um, Tony, I don't think that affects you, uh, but uh, for the, the locals, uh, it would be an issue. So that's just a reminder. Um, is there a motion to appoint a chair of the committee? Uh, do we do we have a nomination for a chair? Do we have to make a motion to appoint one before we make have a nomination? A, make a nominate. Nominate. Uh, do, do we have any anyone who would like to be chair? Um, Molly offered to uh, continue unless there is someone else who wants the job. So I I certainly don't have the um, bandwidth to do that, but. I would definitely, I appreciate Molly and her role. Okay, I'll consider there is, that's a nomination of Molly as chair. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, I'll call the nominations closed and could um, ask for a vote uh, to um, appoint Molly as chair. Again, I'll just say, does anyone object to that or abstain from that? Seeing none, I'll call that unanimous. Fun with Robert's rules of order. Um, affordable housing <clears throat> update. Um, I don't know that I have a lot. The uh, Trinitas project is still alive. Uh, Attorney Reedy had um, asked if he could make a further presentation to the Finance Committee, the Select Board. Uh, the, apparently, the Finance Committee said they were not interested in hearing about it for, at this time. The Select Board uh, referred it to the Planning Board first. The Planning Board discussed it last night. And we didn't see any point in discussing it since it uh, is not in a position that we could approve. So um, we'll just see how that plays out. Um, that's the large front of uh, friendly 40 B there. Correct. Yeah. That's kind of large and out of place, isn't it? I mean, it's. Uh, yes. That, but that's. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. my personal opinion. <laughs> um, the uh, I, just the thought of people walking down North Maple Street to catch a bus. Um, it's also another problem with it since they're planning to proposing to connect to uh, the Amherst sewer treatment plant. Uh, some years ago, there was a, a large residential subdivision planned on what is now the UMass Farm. They were going to ring the uh, racetrack with uh, luxury houses and in the field across the street on the other side of North Maple Street. Um, it doesn't perk, so they had to connect to sewer. At the time, we had an opinion of town council that to, in order to 
grant an easement to a private developer, it would require a vote of town meeting. And that was probably the final stake in the project um, is the, uh, the chances of getting a, a even a majority vote at town meeting for uh, extending the sewer line for a large development was nominal. Uh, Have they made any alterations to the plan that they uh, sh uh, showed us in their presentation? The uh, comment from attorney Reedy is that the plan has been uh, updated, but he was uh, discussing possibly putting together a, a, uh, a PowerPoint, which we have not seen. Uh, and he, was, he asked to come to the planning board meeting on August 1, but we have a pretty heavy agenda already. So I said, if, um, if he wants to discuss the 40R smart zoning options for such a development, that's something the planning board probably would talk to him about. But uh, again, it's a it's a tough location. And uh, the other related, I guess we'll call three and four kind of related. The other is the um, the Econo Lodge uh, that is still uh, pending before the uh, Housing Appeals Board in Boston. Uh, I have no information on where that stands. <clears throat> Planning Board is not in that loop. Um, Molly and Tony exchanged some emails earlier this week on the UMass Project Assistance. Apparently that got into a communications uh, dead end of some sort. So uh, I don't think anything is happening there. Yeah, Bill, I think that's right. So at least at the moment, um... There's interest on the part of of Steve Schreiber. I think that you know we'd have to, um, you know, connect with him. Uh, I think what wound up happening as uh, Molly got back to me, there there wasn't contact with Steve, but there was contact with Professor Rensky, and so um, so it wasn't something that Steve was able to talk about with regard to projects with his uh, faculty um, in architecture. But uh, I think there's some promise, and then you know the other the other piece is that there would have to be some funding for the project, and you know that it will be a little bit of an ongoing uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I will uh, over the next couple of weeks. I'm in and out of the office um, and uh, depositing a, a, my daughter to Miami for for work and getting my son back to school. But uh, I'll be in touch with both. Professor Schreiber and Professor Rensky to, you know, try to accelerate this. And it, it lo it's looking more like a second semester type of project if we're to get anything um, off the ground. That's what I was thinking. It doesn't seem to be uh, uh, likely for the fall. Yeah, I, I think it's all, you know, two things are in play. I mean, one, the speed of as we know, the, the academic calendar and the municipal calendar are both, um, you know, they're not super fast necessarily. And then, then I think secondly, even when we started to discuss this, uh, as I joined the committee as a non-voting member, I think um, we, were, we were rather late in the, uh, you know, in the process anyway. But uh, I think given um, some time and over the next couple of months to discuss this with both uh, of the faculty members, there's a good chance we can have, you know, something uh, in early 2024 if there's interest. And I think there is, right? Uh, yes. Well, we, uh, we we put together a, a menu of potential areas that we would look like to look into. And um, if there's mutual interest, uh, we, we can see how to get to the next step. If it's uh, just not going to happen, well, we chalk that through too. 
Yeah, I, I I would like to think it's going to happen. And one of the things that uh, you know I could say, um, I don't think it it's betraying much, but um, Professor Schreiber had some thoughts about you know all of those projects potentially, um, you know, getting done. Um, I have to talk to him a little bit more about that, uh, but um, let's just say that there's some good possibilities, and I, and I you know I think that there's some promise there. Okay. Um, I really don't have anything to add on the information session on housing and zoning. That was sort of Molly's developing idea. Um, so I, I think we'll probably have to defer to, uh, to our next meeting um, so that uh, to get her thoughts on where that's going. Yeah, I'm Bill, not... last, last time we had talked about that, I think Molly had mentioned someone uh, in the town was tasked with uh, evaluating sort of the resident notification system. I don't know if we wanna keep that as an agenda item to just touch on to see if there's been progress. I'm not aware of any, but we can, yeah. that's why I was thinking this might just be something that uh, yeah. Uh, Molly had the threads for this one um, mm -hmm. as, as they were at a very early stage in development. Um, um, partly uh, the reason for, for trying to get a July meeting, so some boards just defer July and August and uh, I don't want to completely lose everybody. The planning board, for example, does meet, we meet twice a month, every month, although we did take July 4th off. Um, we don't have a lot that's really hopping right now. Um, there, it, it was a surprisingly busy fall and spring for housing and economic development issues. Um, but suddenly everybody, I guess, got heat stroke. <laughs> Although um, I, I just want to mention, I, uh, whatever the algorithm is, when I sc uh, scroll through YouTube, occasionally I get um, suggest a suggestion to see a video on Hampshire Mall, a dead mall, question mark. So I'm going to click on that at some point. Um, <laughs> I will say that I walked through one wing of Hampshire Mall on Saturday. I uh, stopped into uh, Dick's Sporting Goods to look for a folding chair. And then I thought I would just walk down to Penny's uh, and think about my options. And I got to say, that's a real lonely stretch in there even with Planet mm -hmm. Fitness, but Planet Fitness is open to the mall. It has a mall entrance, but the whole registration desk is close to the parking lot door. Um, there are a couple of other stores in there, um, but it, it's a lonely place on a Saturday at 3 p.m. Yeah, so, actually, I met with the Pyramid Group a while back to talk about their New England development strategy and also talked about the Hampshire mall and even they know it's, it's not doing well. They've got a few tenants in there that have long-term leases like planet fitness. And they basically told me they were like that whole half of the mall could go away. They could easily relocate those tenants and nobody would, would give up any, any fit or fight. They just, they know that it's not performing and with bed, bath and beyond closing. And from what I hear, Barnes and Noble is probably not far behind I think we're we're at a point where the retailers are going to start having to reckon with this new environment. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh, I've noticed that Penny's doesn't seem to have. It, it's, it's looking tired in there. Yeah. I think they're on their way out too. So that does bring up the, the thought of whether um, there would be some interest in 
redeveloping a portion of the mall for residential rather than retail. So we'll certainly keep that on the radar. Um, we did uh, at our third Tuesday in, I guess it would, was June, um, had a, a discussion with a representative from the Commonwealth on 40R zoning districts. And um, he's very, very knowledgeable. He's, he's the, the guy who decides whether the application for a 40R will go through or not. Um, so it was, it was a good uh, good exploration of the some of the issues, uh, but it's a lengthy process. So we would be talking about if we were going to see a 40R district, uh, it would be spring town meeting at the earliest. And honestly, we'd like to have some and maybe I, uh, I'll talk to Molly about reaching out to management at the mall. Um, we don't necessarily want to go through the exercise if they're not interested in working with us. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm fairly confident they are because they've been doing this at other malls where and with great success. They said, um, I think it was Kingston or they have one mall where they put in mixed use housing. And instantly, uh, big box retailers and anchor stores were more interested in moving in than they were before. Foot traffic generated more business. So they, they've seen firsthand the success of that model. So I, I don't doubt that they would be interested. And, and maybe there's even an opportunity for the town to leverage that interest for some financial contribution or some kind of development incentive. Yeah, well, we're definitely looking to increase the stock of affordable units. Um, and realize that if we just get the 25% affordable, um, that um, which is the most we can ask for in a 40R, uh, in a rental <clears throat> model, 100% of the units get counted as affordable, even though only 25% actually are. So that would, that would be uh, a compromise I think we'd be willing to deal with. And it, it addresses some concerns that some members of the planning board have about not, uh, um, not uh, developing another field for houses. That, uh, as uh, Joseph Grodnick likes to say, our job is to feed the people, not to house them necessarily. So, um, so um, yeah, that'll be something we'd like to I, I guess uh, I'll just make a note, Molly. Contact uh, Pyramid. Okay, well, she's going to be sorry she missed this meeting. <laughs> Made her chair, have assignments for her. Uh, so that sort of came under the unforeseen items at time of posting, which uh, we're not actually taking any action on. So I don't mind just floating them out there. Anybody else have anything um, that they might like to toss out for discussion? Uh, well, then, uh, Kind of a short meeting, but let's enjoy what is left of this day. Uh, my uh, Dave Hayes, the weather nut, says that tomorrow is not going to be as nice. Back to the rain. <laughs> back to the rain, back to the heat, back to the humidity. So, so well, thank you, everyone. Um, could we get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Anybody opposed to adjourning? Seeing none, I declare it unanimous. Thank you, everyone.